Hello again and thank you for visiting my channel. There's a lot going on in the world today and everyone is aware of it. These are difficult and trying times and there's a lot of tragedy. But to dwell on it 24-7 isn't healthy either. It's really important to stay positive because positivity helps keep us healthy. So today I'm going to be sharing from my book The Letterbox. In it, there are a couple of letters from March. As I read them, I'll show you the pages. I hope you enjoy the coming of spring and see all the beautiful things that happen at this time of year. Still, the birds will sing, the flowers will bloom, the sun will shine. The world is a beautiful place and God still cares. So stay with me and let's go through it together. Hello, my dears. Where I live, spring is calculated by the appearance or disappearance of birds. They seem to know what the weather and climate are going to do far more than we humans do, regardless of modern tracking systems. A few weeks ago, I saw the first robin in my neighborhood, and the collared Eurasian doves started cooing again last week. I don't know where they've been all winter, but I assume they went south. Smart birds. However, spring is clearly not all the way here because there are still swans in the fields. They overwinter in our area and go north in the summer. So if they're still here in mid-March, that's an indication that winter is still hanging on. Needless to say, I'm looking forward to the day when they've gone again. Not that they're not a joy to see, but that they signal a turning of the seasons. Out my window, through the pouring rain this morning, I saw one tiny blob on the forsythia bush in my yard. Really, I had to squint to see it, but realized that it was a blossom, the first one to open on the entire tree. That's a sure sign of spring around here. Speaking of opening, this morning I opened my bedroom closet door and thought, what don't I like here anymore? Is there anything I would miss if I got rid of it? In the spirit of simplifying the theme this month, asking those questions helped me decide what to eliminate. We all love our favorite things, and we should probably keep them if they give us joy. But that can add up to too much stuff that we don't use for a variety of reasons. I use a simple mental checklist for deciding whether to keep garments. You're welcome to use it in your own closet. Number one, do I love it? Two, does it fit me well? Does it make me look thinner? This is just me, your goal might be different. Does it cover well? Or will bending over result in a cleavage show or some other kind of show that I don't want? Does it work with at least three other things in the closet? Does it hide what I want it to hide? Does the color flatter me? Do I feel wonderful when I wear it? Does it remind me of a memory that I want or don't want? Am I okay with the care it requires? If you wear clothes that don't suit you, you're a fashion victim. You have to wear clothes that make you look better. That was from Vivian Westwood. I have a long navy light wool sweater that has been in my closet for probably 30 years. It's a classic style, makes me look thinner, and works with all kinds of things in the closet. It's a keeper and it never shows wear. Recently, I eliminated a pretty pink shell top from my closet. While I loved the color and the sparkly bits across the front, it was so low that I found myself always tossing the straps back over my shoulders so it wouldn't be cleavage city. The fabric, rayon knit with spandex, which I love, also rests across my middle. While the color was perfect and the care was easy, it didn't pass on the cover slash hide aspect. I blessed someone else with it. A striped long sleeve t-shirt met the same fate. Why? It was too short. Everything else worked except that one aspect. Now a shorter person can enjoy it. Seasonal changes are great times for closet cleanouts. They are also good times to review how you want the next quarter of the year to go. It's good to have plans and dreams, but don't be surprised if God brings you somewhere else, said Lan Anne F. Byler. 
Not having a strategy for my near future has been unsettling, so I've focused on simplifying in order to regain my equilibrium. Surprisingly, it has helped a lot. I can give my attention to something concrete that will result in good things happening. Simplifying your life is not only about simplifying your surroundings. Sure, you can attack the garage or the front hall closet and you'll undoubtedly feel better for having done it, but simplifying how you spend your time is possibly even more valuable. With today's technology and social media opportunities, we can all become experts at time frittering. After all, people post cool stuff on Facebook and Pinterest. If I'm being honest with myself, and I am, spending hours on these pursuits is not the best use of my time in light of where I want my life to go. This is a big subject, so suffice to say, if it's not leading you in the direction of your wishes and dreams, perhaps you need to rethink spending your precious life's minutes and hours on it. Follow your dreams, believe in yourself, and don't give up. And here's the second letter for March in my book, The Letterbox. Dear beautiful you, I've been thinking a lot this week about socks. I'm not especially fond of socks, not for what they are, but for what they represent. I wear socks only when it's cold enough for my feet to be uncomfortable without them. I much prefer going barefoot, so having to wear socks means that it's cold out. As someone who is perpetually chilly, I want it warm all the time. Alas, we don't always get what we want, and this winter has been a long, cold, wet one here in Canada's west coast. Signs of spring are appearing, but barefoot weather is not yet in sight. But listen, no matter how you may be affected by your environment, and we all are whether we recognize it or not, we can always find something for which to be thankful. For example, the forsythia blooming in my yard. I'll admit, cloudy weather that goes on for weeks gets me down. It's work to stay upbeat when you want to crawl back in bed with a good book and stay there until the sun shines again. Okay, I often feel like spending the day in bed with a good book anyway. There are so many great books to read. I find that the more I focus on the miserable climate conditions, the worse I feel about them. It doesn't help that my husband is a weather watcher. He's got all the gadgets and has even recorded the weather in a diary for going on 15 years. In the face of this, it's important to choose something else to fix my focus on. Helen Keller said, Keep your face to the sunshine and you can never see the shadow. This habit works equally well for other adversities or misadventures that come our way. We like to think that we're in control of our lives, but that's not entirely true. We're in control of some things, sure, but there's plenty that we can do nothing about. When stuff happens that we can't change, we still have choices. We do tend to forget that we can always choose our response to events. No one can tell us how to think or feel. We get to decide that for ourselves. Rather than trying not to think about the pain in my shoulder, the unrelenting rain, or the fact that the landlord just cut down all of my heirloom rose bushes, I'm deciding to focus on something else. Trying not to think about something is still thinking about it. Here's a quick list of possibilities. Plan a vacation, go for coffee with a friend, or call her up instead. Choose patterns and fabric to sew something. You can order fabric online and patterns. Clean your office. Update the spice cupboard. Read a new novel. Movie binge on a theme, i.e. historical period, 1950s films, favorite actor. Catch up on a job you've put off. Summer wardrobe shop. Paint a picture and count your blessings. Basically, look for something that makes you happy. Do you need to take a step back and look at your emotional state objectively? If someone else t were to examine you, what would he or she report? In my case, I think the observer would say to me, this person has had a hard winter and needs something to cheer her up. So that's what I've done. I realized that in the midst of dismalia, I made that word up, when I really need two weeks on a beach but can't go right now, a little cheering up will help. I ask myself, what would do that for me? Dr. Caroline Leaf says, consciously controlling your thoughts 
is not just the first step in the process, it's the main step. When you're feeling blue, it can be difficult to come up with creative thoughts or ideas. Helen Keller, who was rendered blind, deaf, and dumb by disease as a small child, famously said, and I repeat, keep your face to the sunshine and you can never see the shadow. Her reference to sunshine and shadow are metaphorical, but the idea works. If I keep my focus on what gives me joy, what cheers me up, I won't have time to dwell on what gets me down. According to Dr. Caroline Leaf in her book, Who Switched Off My Brain? Controlling Toxic Thoughts and Emotions, negative thoughts actually cause damage to the brain. I highly recommend Everything by Dr. Leaf and have to admit that learning about the damaging consequences of negativity is sobering indeed. Even when you have plenty about which to be miserable, do yourself a favor and think good thoughts. Always remember, you are enough just as you are. You have the power to change how and what you think and therefore change the course of your life. How fabulous is that? Thank you for watching. I hope this has given you a lift. There's so many beautiful things to appreciate, to have gratitude for, and we need to focus on those happy things. Stay happy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.